Hello and welcome to World Talks here on TVP World. I'm your host, Diana Skaya. Georgia's pro-European opposition believes that Saturday's parliamentary elections were stolen by the ruling pro-Russian party, essentially leading to the European Union to demand an investigation be carried out onto reports of electoral violations. Now, on Monday night, Georgians protested the results of this election, which they claim was rigged. And to discuss what will happen to Georgia next, I'm joined by Laura Linderman, senior fellow at the Central Asia Caucasus Institute at the American Foreign Policy Council. Ms. Linda, thank you so much for being with us here uh, this evening on World Talks on TVP World. Thanks for having me. Now, let's take it from uh, just most recently. The news that we have is 13 EU ministers uh, are specifically demanding this investigation be carried out uh, in this uh, electoral uh, electoral irregularities that that, that occurred in uh, Georgian elections. What type of um, what type of investigation uh, are we are we looking at, and how feasible is this? So I would agree with the the need for um, an investigation. What we saw are widespread um, allegations of fraud, from voter intimidation to multiple voting, um, and a lot of statistical analyses, anomalies, particularly in the rural regions. So I think we need to, to have a close investigation of these local precincts that have statistical anal um, anomalies um, from a, a international body that is widely seen as um, nonpartisan and can adjudicate this fairly. So what happens uh, should these results, uh, sh at, the end, at the end results, should this investigation actually come through? So what the president has called for and the opposition groups is snap elections administered by some sort of international body. I would agree with this idea because there are enough um, anomalies and questionable results that we can't really be sure uh, how the elections went and what the actual percentages were. The very credible exit polls um, from ind independent organizations showed that the Georgian ruling Georgian Dream Party got approximately 40%, where their official tallies had them around, up much closer to 54%. So that is quite a discrepancy and makes a, a huge difference in these pivotal elections that are going to be a cause for the future of Georgians foreign, Georgia's foreign policy orientation. Will, be, will they continue to be aligned towards the West, which mirrors the vast majority of Georgians' uh, preference, or towards Russia um, with the Georgian dream? That's why it's very pivotal and important elections. Now, do you think that aside from uh, a potential investigation uh, be carried out, do you think that protests and demonstrations could shift uh, could shift the on ongoing situation in Georgia? Absolutely. We already saw protests last night, um, which were called for by the president. And I think that continuing protests will send a strong message and also encourage Western partners to make stronger uh, positions about the fraud and irregularities seen at the elections. And with this being such an important turning point for Georgia as far as their foreign poli policy orientation and their future in Europe, protesting is is likely the only way to really get attention and move, uh, get attention on the world stage and, and, and move things forward. And now given, the, uh, given these rising protests, how is Georgian Dream likely to respond domestically? I think that we should expect that they will crack down. We've seen already um, an alignment from Georgian Dream towards um, legislation that targets critical NGOs and the media. Uh, we've seen uh, crackdowns in the past on protests. I would expect further uh, moves in this direction from the ruling party. And could we see a shift in Georgian Dream's approach uh, in terms of uh, their shift to political opposition and civil liberties in Georgia? Absolutely. In the spring, we saw um, that the Georgian Dream passed this Russian-style foreign agent law, which is aimed specifically at targeting civil society organizations in Georgia, and and was written in a very in very broad terms, which means that it can be used um, to go after political enemies by the ruling party. So I think we'll continue to see these tactics potentially used by the Georgian Dream Party um, if 
if we do not, if this sort of trajectory cannot be stopped uh, right now. That's why this is such a critical moment for Georgia. And also critical, I believe, I mean, like you said, it's to see what side Georgia will essentially move towards the West or uh, with Russia. Now, what are the potential impacts of Georgian Dream's continued power on Georgia's EU uh, and NATO uh, aspirations? So we've already seen um, impact. So I think Georgian Dream's continued moving uh, towards Russia will pause the EU uh, candidacy, candidacy process that Georgia has underway. And by in, pause, what, uh, are we, what, are, what, are we, what are we talking about? Pause, I mean, for years, for months, what are we looking at? Because, I mean, I've seen some posts on Platform X. Uh, one of the protesters uh, who said that my country is going to be in turmoil for the next 30 years. Was that an exaggeration, or do you think that this would be possible should things not change? So I, I think... Is it possible? Sure, that sounds like a worst case scenario to me. I think the Georgian people are quite strong and, and quite resolved in their determination to move towards the European Union. I think in the short to medium term, while Georgian dream remains in power, we're going to see a cutting off of the progress towards EU accession um, and EU candidacy status. However, I, Georgia and the Georgian people have um, enjoyed many civil liberties and freedoms since independence. I don't see them going quietly as the government becomes more and more authoritarian and tries to crack down. So I think that things could get quite dark in the short and medium term in Georgia. Um, I'm not so pessimistic to think that this is a 30 year decision. Um, I think that Georgian dream is increasingly unpopular and people in the country see the direction that the country is headed. Um, and will fight for change. Say this election is not repeated, snap elections don't take place. Can we see sanctions being targeted at Absolute. Georgia? Absolutely. I would imagine that the European Union um, has some ideas per perhaps around suspending um, visa-free liberalization, which will very much hurt the Georgian people. I would imagine that the United States has a package of sanctions and the ability to both financially and uh, to levy financial sanctions as well as travel sanctions, which I think we'll see increasingly. As well, the United States gives a large portion of, uh, fun of their funding to uh, Georgian government. Um, there's there's a lot of interoperability between the, the Georgian government and the, and the U.S. government. And I think much of that funding, which has already been paused, will cease and we'll see um, further tightenings along those lines. Hopefully that won't go so far as to really hurt the civil society um, organizations that are working so hard to secure uh, independent and democratic Georgia. Um, but I think we do have to be clear that the U.S. and the EU will use the um, methods and mechanisms they have um, to show the government just how um, displeased they are with the authoritarian um, uh, movement that, they, that they're seeing. Victor Orban was very uh, quick in uh, arriving to Georgia to congratulate, of course, the Georgian Dream Party. I mean, Margarita Simonian uh, was also very quick in sending her congratulatory remarks on Russian television. Um, what message do you think this shows, but particularly about Orban? I mean, uh, Hungary is in Europe. What message uh, was he was he giving here? Well, I think it is quite interesting to see who rushed to congratulate Georgian Dream, which, as you mentioned, Russia and Hungary were among the firsts. Um, I think that it's it's a quite interesting uh, case study to look at Georgian Dream's um, relationship with the Hungarian ruling party. Uh, the Hungarian ruling party is quite known for its close ties to Russia. And we've seen uh, the Georgian Dream leveraging rural voting power and their own structural advantages to maintain control, much in the same method you could argue we've seen in Hungary. Uh, this seems like it's done potentially with guidance or support from Russia and uh, Russian allies and proxies. So we saw the Georgian people who were protesting in front of parliament react quite strongly 
uh, to Orban's uh, arrival in the country, booing him and expressing their displeasure. So I don't think I think that while the Georgian dream is leveraging this relationship, it shows the broader uh, alignment that we have between Georgian dream and the and Viktor Orban and his party. Now, let me ask you this, um, Slora. Given Georgia's strategic location and the ongoing tensions that are uh, ongoing in the South Caucasus, how might the outcome of this uh, election affect regional stability and relationships with Georgia's neighbors, including Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Turkey? Yeah, so I think that we can see uh, immediately Armenia the Armenian president, Pashinyan, also congratulated Georgia, showing that if Georgia turns to more authoritarian and uh, to their north, to their northern neighbor, uh, Armenia will be left in an already more vulnerable position than it's in currently. The Georgian dream government has fine relations, relations with other, Azerbaijan and probably quietly are fairly well aligned with Turkey. But I think hope for democracy in the South Caucasus uh, will be greatly dimmed if there is no immediate change in the short or near future of Georgia's um, democratic backsliding. What do you think personally uh, will unfold uh, in the coming weeks for, for Georgia? And, and what place does the, does the United States, particularly now there's an election coming up in just a few days, uh, will, will play in all of this? If any. Right. Yeah, I think that the timing of the U.S. election is quite unfortunate as far as the U.S. being distracted um, and the outcome of the U.S. election could have uh, an impact on how much attention the, the U.S. pays to Georgia. I think probably things in the very near term are going to get darker and more difficult for Georgia rather than easier. I'm hopeful that in the medium to medium term or in the slightly longer short term, we'll see the kind of the Georgian people uh, show their mettle and their um, the fact that they do not want to live in an authoritarian uh, pro-Russian environment and will fight back. Um, I do agree, though, that the, the situation geopolitically is difficult for them um, and, and they're fighting an uphill battle. I have to remain somewhat optimistic um, just looking at Georgia's history and their Georgians inability to tolerate very authoritarian um, impacts on their freedom and in thus far. And we can see that also through the frustrated protesters that we see out on the streets uh, in Georgia. Thank you so much, Laura Linderman, senior fellow at the Central Asia Caucasus Institute at the American Foreign Policy Council for being with us here on World Talks on TVP World. Thanks so much for having me. And that completes this edition of World Talks here on TVP World. I'm Diana Skaya. Stay tuned for more news.